So let's look at one more mathematical uh, object that we can compute kind of simply um, by making some clever optimizations. Um, and the, the first thing that popped into our head ends up not being a, a particularly good idea, but then you know we can use that idea uh, that's, that's not particularly efficient to build something uh, considerably faster. So this problem is extremely similar, but it's, it's, uh, it, we, can, we can approach it in a different, uh, different manner. So this is the problem of exponentiation. All right, so suppose you're given a number, x, and you want to, and, and uh, an exponent. Uh, the question is, what's the best way of computing x raised to that exponent? So let's say given, given x and n, compute x to the power of n. Well, you could begin by just thinking, let, let me write down the definition of x to the n, right? What is, what is that, what is the definition? Well, x to the n is just x times x times x dot 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 times x, where all told, there are n x's in there, right? n copies. So how many multiplications would we perform if we just followed the definition? We would perform n minus 1 multiplications. Okay. So, you know, we can think about what it would mean to write pseudocode for this. So let's let's write this as bf exp. Uh, we're given x, we're given n, and we want to compute x raised to the nth power. You know, the very crudest, most simple way of doing this would be to say, uh, you know, here's our here's our x power. Our x power is just going to be initialized at x, and then we'll set up a for loop that does the the correct number of multiplications, All right? So for uh, for i equals let's say one to n minus one, right? So we know we need to do exactly n minus one multiplications. Uh, we we multiply another copy of x onto x power, and then at the end we return x power. So x power times equals x, and then in the end we return x power. Okay, so, so if we've done the indexing right and everything is fine, then it's clear, it should be clear, that this performs exactly n minus 1 multiplications, right? So there's there's a comment, right? Here's so this then this is n minus one, okay? And we could verify that if we like by working out the actual expression. So our t of n is the sum from i equals one to n minus one, uh, and in each tick of the for loop, we have one multiplication. Uh, and so what does this come out to? Well, we've got n minus one, minus one, plus one. You know, just chase the whole formula through, don't lose anything, uh, it gives you in the end n minus one. So there we verified that we have we have n minus one multiplications required to compute the exponent of of you know x x to the n uh, if we just follow the definition. So this is big theta of n. So just like the other one, we can look at what we've just done and ask ourselves, did we really need to do all that work? So let's actually, let's think about this in, in, in a slightly more concrete example. Uh, let's think of this in the context of n equaling 4. So what if we wanted to compute x to the fourth? So let me just write that down, and then, and then we can think about what, uh, what, it actually, what it actually includes in it. So this is x times x times x times x. And so you can see there the three multiplications, right? That, that's, that's the, this is the world we live in. We have, if we, if we just walk down this expression and multiply on a new x each time, we're multiplying on three, three x's. But notice this. Suppose I'm walking down and I compute this product, so I compute x squared, and then I'm walking down and, uh, and I say, no, hold on a second, before I multiply on another x, I'm gonna go look and see if I need, if, I, if there's anything I can do with x squared. 
So you walk down and you say, oh, I'm gonna skip, skip this, you know, because maybe maybe I can actually use, maybe I can actually use this x, x squared somewhere on, down the line. And then I come to this multiplication and I say, aha, indeed, there's another x squared. Okay, so if I ever write x to the fourth, what another way to write that is to write x squared squared, right? And, and if I think of it in terms of x squared squared, and then I save my value of x squared for future use, I can uh, compute x to the fourth using only two multiplications, right? What are the two multiplications? Well, the first one is, is here, and then I take this value and I copy it here. So copy. Uh, this is just logically speaking, not, not algorithmically speaking, but logically speaking, I'll think about you know, taking whatever I computed for x squared and just writing it down in the second spot. So I compute that multiplication and then I compute this multiplication. So there's my second multiplication. So in principle, in principle, it should be possible to compute x to the fourth using only two multiplications, right? Not, not all three. Use just two mults, not all three. Okay, so let's chase this a little bit further. Uh, let's take a look at x to the eighth, right? So I'll, I'll think in terms of powers of two for now, uh, and then we'll, we'll see if we, can, uh, if we can generalize in a moment. But let's think about x to the eighth, right? So what is x to the eighth? Well, I can write x to the eighth in the following way. I could write it as x to the fourth squared. I already know something about x to the fourth, right? I can write x to the fourth as x squared squared. So that's x squared squared squared. And maybe now you can see a bit of a pattern, right? And, and let me write this out in long form just to make sure that it's clear. So what I have is x, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So there's all the multiplications that I have to perform. Right there, I've written out the full definition of x to the eighth. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so we've got the right number in there. So the idea here is I say, well, first of all, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna compute, I'm gonna compute x squared. And then I'm going to, in, in a logical sense, I'm gonna copy x squared into all the future spots, right? So I'll copy x squared in here, here, and here. And all that is just one, right? So, so x squared is one multiplication. Okay, so now I've, I've computed x squared and now I have just one multiplication. And what, what my, what my uh, whole product looks like is x squared times x squared times x squared times x squared. Okay, so I, I just, in, in my very first step here, I saved three multiplications, right? Because now I don't have to compute all those extra x squareds. I just have to compute x squared once. So now once I have this, I can do the same thing that I did with x to the fourth, right? I can say, let me compute x to the fourth using one multiplication and then uh, copy it here. And then, uh, so that's, this is, you know, this is a this is a good place to be. What this tells me is now, um, I have I have uh, I'm almost to my destination, having only computed three multiplications so far. And so now, what do I have? I've got x to the fourth uh, and x to the fourth, and those two need to be multiplied together. And so to do that, I just multiply them together, and I end up with computing, you know, x to the eighth using just, what is it, one multiplication, okay? And so, you know, with when I was, when I was thinking about computing x to the fourth in the, the upper example here, uh, I went from having to do three multiplications to having to do only two multiplications. And now when I'm computing x to the eighth, I went from having to do potentially seven multiplications to now only having to do three, right? So by, even though I've doubled the power that I have to raise this thing to, I've only added one more multiplication. So what is this? What is this call to you? You know, if you if you're thinking about this in terms of mathematics, um, what does it mean if I've just doubled something, but it only requires kind of one more unit of work? Well, that that should say something to you about logarithms. 
right? So here's our here's our conjecture, and and we'll 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 uh, you know formalize this in a minute. But our conjecture is that we can use this we can use this concept, you know, this 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 type of algorithm um, to raise x to the nth power in about log n steps. Log maybe log base two perhaps steps. Uh, uh, let's see, log, log two, and uh, let me write a wiggle here, right? Uh, approximately log base two of n multiplications are required to, or I should say are sufficient, right? Are sufficient to compute x to the n. And, and we'll revisit this in the next video and see if we can, if we can formalize this and prove it in some kind of rigorous way.